أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم رمضان يا خير الشهور يا فضل رحمن غفور فيك البشائر غيثها يهدي السعادة والسرور أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Beloved viewers, we welcome you to our program, Ramadan Mubarak. In this program, we shall be discussing issues related to the early month of Ramadan. As we all know that Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. In it, every matured Muslim, either male or female, are expected to fast for 29 or 30 days so as to seek the pleasure of Allah the Almighty. To discuss this all-important issue, I have with me two eminent personalities in the studio today. On my immediate left is Mu'alim Jami Abdul Hakim Saib. Mr. Saib, kindly say salam to our audience. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And next to him is Mu'alim Qasim Oyekala Saib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected scholars, we welcome you to our midst today. And we are so much honored to have you. We know that Ramadan is a blessed month, is a month wherein the doors of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is widely opened and the doors of, uh, of uh, hell is closed, just as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rightly told us. And as Muslims, we are expected to do some things during the holy month of Ramadan. So what are those things that Muslims are expected to engage in during the holy month of Ramadan? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. All righteous deeds are expected from believers during the month of Ramadan. As many of them as we can engage in, and in fact, either during month of Ramadan or not, believers are expected. To always engage in the in, in the in righteous deeds, either directly in the cause of Allah the Almighty or towards the cause of humanity. But to mention very few and, and quickly, the foremost of the righteous deeds we are expected to observe in the month of Ramadan is fasting itself. Allah says, "Faman shahida min kumusharo faliyasmu." He among you who witness the month of Ramadan should observe fasting therein. So this make it the foremost righteous deed. Month of Ramadan cannot come and a Muslim who is able, who is agile and is comfortable will set fasting aside and will say he will engage in other righteous deeds. No, it's not acceptable because it is prescribed, it is compulsory. It is compulsory. So that's number one. Number two, remembrance of Allah in as many of it as we can engage in. But foremost of remembrance of Allah is observance of salat. Like Ali Quran says, Aqimus salat. Observe salat. Pray regularly. Pray timely. Pray as it has been prescribed for you, and then um, start from obligatory prayers. Fadri, Zuri prayer, Asri, and so on and so forth. We must always observe our salawat to time and in congregation, especially those of us who are male Muslims. Women are exempted to pray at home, even up to Juma services. 
they can pray at home, they can be at home, if need be, if they cannot come to the mosque. But it is compulsory for male Muslims to be in the mosque, either during the month of Ramadan, and most especially in the month of Ramadan. So, sorry, before you continue, as for the females, just as you rightly mentioned, does it mean that if they have opportunity of coming to Juma, because they've give, they are permitted to pray at home, they can just sit at home rather than coming to the mosque? Yeah, they, they, they can. Mm -hmm. But it is not compulsory for them. If they have any cause to pray at home, to pray their zura at home, they can. Because only Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. you know, give them that relaxation to be at home, even during Juma. It is only Eid prayers that is compulsory for them to come out to meet other congregations including housemaids, small boys, small girls. If they are not mature, they can be at home with their mothers. But if they, what, they choose to come, nobody has any right to stop them. So apart from this, Sunan prayer, all those um, uh, superrogatory prayers that only Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. observed himself, we should not set them aside. Because setting them aside, we amount to you know, disobedience to Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and especially Noah feel in the month of Ramadan, you know, observing them is meritorious. You what know, Noah feel? Noah feel like a Tarawih prayer, like Tahajud, even when you observe Tarawih prayer in congregation, in the mosque, in the, in the night, and now you wake up one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock a.m., you can also observe your Tahajud prayer before eating your sahur, you know, all these are meritorious act of worship and good deed one can engage in during the month of Ramadan. And apart from this, tilawat al Quran, you know, in the only Quran Allah says, Shah Ramadan al Levi un zilafi il Quran, Hudali nasi wabayi nati minali huda wal You know, it is the month of Ramadan that Allah first of, uh, firstly, you know, um, uh, revealed the Holy Quran to the Holy Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam. So the month of Ramadan and the Holy Quran are like, uh, they, 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 they are trees, or like umbrella cord and a child that, you know, they are inseparable in the womb of the mother. And in the month of Ramadan, it is reported that as uh, Jibril we usually come to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mm -hmm. especially in the night, to reteach the Quran to Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mm -hmm. Alaihi Wasallam. So these are you know, meritorious deeds that are expected of believers in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And apart from this, you know, engaging oneself in uh, azkar, like uh, tasbihat, takbirat, tahmid, istighfar, salawat, Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm -hmm. Tasbihat means you know, glorifying the names of Allah, you know, attributes of Allah the Almighty. Takbirat means you know, to, to extol Allah the Almighty, to pronounce His greatness, His exaltedness. Then tahmid, to give praise to Allah the Almighty. Then istighfar, seeking forgiveness of Allah the Almighty and engaging in limitless number of salawat Allah Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we also call Darud, you know, giving salat and blessings on Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then other good deeds like giving sadaqah in the way of Allah, like if there are complaints or we observe something in our mosque that we need to do this. Sometimes we may not be, I mean, we should not wait until we are called to, to do it. Maybe there are no kettle for ablution, there is no water for ablution, or mosque is dirty. We can engage in putting the mosque in proper shape mm -hmm. for the convenience of the worshippers. Then we can also make donations in the way of Allah. You know, some are compulsory, some are not compulsory. Those that are compulsory are like so called the fig tree. You know, we give to the poor indirectly. We give to our Muslim community for them to share among the deserving ones, then those that are also superrogatory, if one has it, is to also give sadaqa gift to either Muslims or non-Muslims in our community, in our town. These are various good deeds we can engage in the month of Ramadan. Exactly. Then ob observing etikaf, and also if we are able, we can also perform. Inshallah, we are still coming to Jem, Inshallah, exactly. and Alhamdulillah, you have told us that uh, we have to be generous in the holy month of Ramadan. And we have learned that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi indeed was the most generous during the holy month of Ramadan. So now coming to you, Malim uh, Jami Abdul Hakim Saib, we know that there are some times that are peculiar, I mean, that are related to Ramadan. Like we have Sahur, we have Iftar, 
Because as Muslims, the manner of fasting is quite different from how other religions were fasting before Islam. So tell us, what is the importance of Sahur, Iftar, and all these uh, in, in terms of uh, fasting in the holy month of Ramadan? Exactly. Uh, I appreciate this question as it pertains to um, observing uh, the month of Ramadan. So we have uh, Sahur and Iftar as the terminology used at the beginning to open the fast for a day and Iftar to end the fast for the day. And Sahur is just a meal taken before the daybreak, before the daybreak, before we go for Fajr prayer, while Iftar is taking a, a, a bit time before, um, after the sun set that is before we take uh, we observe our salat maghrib so the blessing in this number one of it is that they are commandment of god almighty allah while com while giving the um uh, commandment to observe fast in the month of ramadan by saying that that you are you, while you are observing fast you have to eat and drink before, um, uh, in as much as the thread, the white thread and the black thread become, you know, distinct from each other. You can you can uh, recognize black thread, white. Uh, you can recognize uh, white thread before the day break. That is when you are uh, you are permitted to eat before the start of um, Ramadan for the day. But the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not just, um, you know, did not just give us this commandment from God Almighty Allah without exemplifying it for us, demonstrating how it is done to us by saying that tasaharu fa inna fi sahur baraka. That don't just think that oh, you, because you saw me or you or you observed that I used to fast days without eating. So don't think that because of that you are you are also, you are also permitted. To be eat to 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 to, to observe fast without observing sahur or iftar that last ahayatikum that I am not like you you are not like me so because someone is feeding me someone is giving me drink so but you are not you are not opportune to that so to meaning that there, because there is blessing in sahur there is blessing in sahur so it is important now, let, assuming someone sleeps off during the course of salami is now is unable to take the sahur in the pre the pre down meal and uh, probably he wakes up after probably around the 6 a.m or even 7 a.m can such a person still fast in that day the person can still fast for the day in as much that the the day has breaking already so he has to continue the fast if he can but if he can't, then you have to, you have to, you have to do, you have to perform um, Ramadan. You have to fast again another after day the after the month of Ramadan. Okay. So, yeah. but uh, you are talking about iftar. Now, iftar is when we, uh, when the day is setting. So when we are to end the fast. So the only Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has also directed that we should hasten to to break the fast. So with this. The Almighty uh, all Allah in the Quran did not put us in any form of hardship by saying that we should fast without, without taking anything to begin the fast or without taking anything to end the fast. So to begin with, so you have to observe Sahur and to end the fast, you have to observe Iftar. These are blessings in but all these Before forms. we proceed further, in terms of Sahur, we have seen instances whereby some people wake up around 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 2 a.m. to take their sahur, this pre down meal. Is, is, this is it allowed in Islam for someone to take this meal at this time, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., very early? I said before that this sahur and iftar, the only Prophet Islam has instructed that it is best to be taken to not to, to haste to observe iftar, but not to haste while observing. Sahur, why taking Sahur? So why why taking Sahur close to the second um, Adhan for for Salat al Fajr? So when the Adhan, the Muadhin is calling the Adhan, that is a call to prayer. So for the second time, so we have to stop eating and drinking. So but those who are taking it prior to that time, if if it is not advisable, or if it is if it is you know if it is convenient for them 
But I don't think it could it the so meaning can be convenient. The time so. for Sahur and Fajr prayer is very close. Very close. And that's why we have in some hadith that said that this companion said that Sahagna thumma kumna ila salah that no. after taking our Sahur, then we oh, go straight good. to observe the Fajr prayer. Jazakum la khair mission sahib for the beautiful rendition. Now come to you, Mishan Ayukala Sahib. The only Quran has uh, told us that during the course of fasting in the month of Ramadan, whether someone is sick or is on journey, we are expected to leave the fast. But we have seen instances how someone might be sick and still insist that I want to fast, I want to fast by all means. And probably someone who is on journey which instead insists that I want to I want to perform this uh, fasting. Tell expert try to explain to us what is the benefit of obeying these beautiful injunctions in the Holy Quran. I, I, like you rightly said, it's an injunction in the Holy Quran. Those who find it difficult, who find fasting, you know, discomfort with themselves, they should feed the poor. So it's an injunction of the Holy Quran. No, the hakam on the land. Yeah, before that phrase, yeah. it is faman kana minkum maridon. Aw ala safar. Faidatum min ayami ukhal. No, those of you who is sick or is on journey should fast the, the number of uh, no fasting, the means in the other days after the month of Ramadan. You know, the use of word in the Holy Quran is, uh, is good for us to understand. When we understand the Holy Quran, we will know what to do and we know what not to do. No, as I promised Messiah alayhi salam, the only founder of Ahmadiyya, being the Hakam, uh, Hakam and Adelan of our own time, of our era, and our Imam that Allah has guided himself, you know, to take, up, take us back to the only Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, has said there is no option in this. It is an injunction. It is a law of Allah the Almighty that if you are sick, if you are on journey, live fasting for those number of days. And you no, know, there is another, I mean, there's a third class among them. Allah Ladina You know, those that are not sick, those that are not on journey, but they find it greatly difficult to observe fasting, like the old people, very aged one, the minors, you know, the children who are, you know, who are yet to attain to age of majority or what they call age of maturity, you know, then those women who are pregnant, those who are giving, you know, they are, they are suckling their babies, or those, you may observe them to be healthy, but they know that inside them, if they, have, they observe the fasting, they will run into problem, you know, health twice. So all of them are put together under Al-Ladina Yotoyekunahu. This is the tafsir of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih the second, Rodi Allah Anihu, who is a Khalifa after Hazrat Imam Mahdi, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, putting all of them together, Allah has given them, you know, permission to live fasting. If they can fast on other days, fine. If they cannot, then they can give, you know, fidya. So, yeah, to, what is fidya and how is it? Fidya done? is expiation. You know what you give in lieu of another thing, and in in, in you, you will give it on the scale of how you are taking care of yourself. You know, if um, for example, if it is two hundred naira that I'm using to, to to feed myself for a meal, then there are two only two meals in the month of Ramadan: sahur, then iftar. Then I should give you know four hundred naira, for example, for for I mean, in lieu of one fasting. So in our jamaat, because everything is regulated, in the Muslim community, especially here in Nigeria, is being regulated to be 500 naira you know, per, per day. That is 250 naira per meal. 500 naira per day will we, we, we we, we sum up to 15,000 naira. So the fidia for the whole month of Ramadan in this year has been given to be 15,000 naira in our community. So a person that finds fasting inconvenient for himself and, it's, and he or she know that it is known to Allah the Almighty, we give 15,000 naira minimum as fidia to another person who is able to fast but has no means to feed 
himself. So as a member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, can someone just give that someone in his community this amount or what is the, how can, can he, pay or he or she pay this amount? So it can be given directly to the person who needs it. Then if he, does not, if he or she does not know anyone who needs it, it can be paid to the local community, you know, local branch of Ahmadiyya Muslim community through, so, through the organization. They can identify who needs it and it will and be given to And I said that if someone is not able to pay this amount and he has food, can he also give the person he sees that he or she is lacking food in his community? Yeah, even if you want to observe your fasting at a later time after Ramadan, mm -hmm. you are still permitted to give fidya. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, doing good in addition to another good is meritorious in the sight of Allah. Exactly. And beloved viewers, if you are just joining us, we are still on our program Ramadan Mubarak, and we've been trying to discuss several issues that are related to the holy month of Ramadan. Now we have online with us uh, Mauvi Shamsuddin Ojo Sahib, who is a missionary in Ibadan, Oyo State. Mauvi Sahib, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum la khairan for joining us on our program, Mauvi Sahib. Now, Mauvi Sahib, can you please tell us, what are the blessings in the holy month of Ramadan? Our scholars they have tried to tell us several activities that we are expected to partake in in the holy month of Ramadan and some of the blessings in it. Can you please expand further to us what are the blessings that one can get in this holy month of Ramadan? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful uh, question which is concerning the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Uh, there are so many blessings which are connected to the month of Ramadan because the month of Ramadan itself uh, is a wonderful one which stands out amongst other uh, months found in the lunar year. To begin with, even from the Quran, which is the first source of guidance for Muslims, we find uh, one of the blessings and the main essence or the core of the month of Ramadan. Whilst Allah the Almighty was uh, giving out that commandment in Quran chapter 2, verse 184, Almighty Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. After having uh, called the believers and uh, giving us that commandment of fasting. Then he says, why are we being commanded to fast? So that we may attain piety. So how do we attain piety? They are those things, those actions that we engage uh, in the month of Ramadan. Through them, we reap so many blessings of Almighty Allah. Uh, for instance, Ramadan, uh, one of the benefits of Ramadan is that uh, it opens up the door of acceptance of prayers. As Almighty Allah has uh, told us about the acceptance of prayers uh, among the verses of uh, Ramadan, after uh, having commanded us to fast, then he said, So when the servants of Almighty Allah are asking the Prophet of uh, Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about him, about Allah, then he should tell them that he, Allah, is very, very close to them. He accepts, he answers, he listens to the prayers of the supplicants as and when they supplicate, uh, they supplicate him. So in this vein, it means one of uh, the most fundamental blessings found in the month of Ramadan is the acceptance of prayer. Whilst uh, treating one of the benefits or the blessings of Ramadan, which is connected to the soul as well as the body, uh, we see that the reduction of food which we engage in, uh, food normally is halal, something which is lawful for us to take. But during the hours of fasting, we refrain from eating only for the sake of Almighty Allah. So in this vein, the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, has explained that Almighty Allah wants believers to reduce the material food 
so as to be able to increase in the spiritual food. So we are to take uh, the material food lesser while we increase in spirituality. And uh, increasing in spirituality will take us closer to Almighty Allah, which is also another benefit uh, of Ramadan. In the physical sense, uh, as a Muslim, would, the second Khalifa, radiallahu anhu, has explained that whilst we reduce uh, the, the intake of our material food, it helps our system. Those food or those components of food that have accumulated in our system, they are done away with with uh, the month of uh, Ramadan. So there are so many benefits uh, in the month of Ramadan. May Almighty Allah enable us to reach as uh, much benefit as possible. Amen. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan, Mavi Sahib, for the beautiful rendition. Inshallah, we hope to invite you very soon to further discuss on this uh, issue. Jazakumullah khairan. Mishan Sahib, on a final note, what advice do you have for Muslims generally, especially in this holy month of Ramadan, how they can gain maximum benefit from this holy month? Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, my advice for each and every Muslim around the world is to follow the injunction of Allah the Almighty in this month of Ramadan. This is a month full of blessing. There is nothing in this month a Muslim is doing, it is full of blessing, including the smell coming out of our mouth during the month of Ramadan. So this is a, an ample opportunity for Muslims around the world to pray to God Almighty Allah during this month to change the condition of the country, to change their personal conditions, to, to further, um, you know, closing the, 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 the gap between them and Allah the Almighty during this blessed month of Ramadan. Yes. May Allah accept all our prayers during this. Amen. Jazakallah I advise all of us to have self-control or self-discipline because without this very important key, we cannot, you know, engage in all the righteous deeds that we have enumerated so far. We will not be able to recite the Holy Quran, we will not pray on time, we will not you know, engage in Asgar, we will not engage ourselves in the observance of Salat, and so many things that we should do. And we will also not be able to move away from what are not required of us. But if we have self-control, self-discipline, everything we go in, in in good way as expected of all of us. Jazakumullah khairan. We so much appreciate your presence here and we are grateful for the knowledge you have shared with us so far. Beloved viewers of MTA, Alhamdulillah, this is how far time we permit us today. Alhamdulillah, we have learned a lot from our scholars on how we can take maximum benefit from this holy month of Ramadan through our worship, through sacrifice, and through every act of us that we are that is enabled that will enable us to seek the pleasure of Allah the Almighty. If you have any question or comment on the program, kindly contact us on Africa at mta.tv. Till another time we come your way, we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على Thank you.